Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. America's foreign policy elite appears to have no idea what it's doing. We're told Obama wants to obliterate the Islamic State using air power, but without helping Iran or Assad or alienating Sunnis. Talk about squaring a circle. What could possibly go wrong? To crosstalk the Islamic State, I'm joined by my guest, Hillary Leverett in Washington. She is a senior lecturer on U.S. foreign policy at the American University, as well as co-author of the book, Going to Tehran, Why America Must Accept the Islamic Republic of Iran. In New York, we have Stephen Schlesinger. He is a fellow at the Century Foundation and author of Active Creation about the establishment of the United Nations. And in London, we cross to Masume Torfei. She is a research associate at LSE and until recently, U.N. Director of Communications in Kabul. All right. Crosstalk rules. In fact, that means you can jump in anytime you want, and I very much encourage it. Hillary, if I can go to you, how do you have a policy mm -hmm. to destroy the Islamic uh, State, uh, not encourage Assad, not encourage the Iranians, and, and not really annoy too many Sunni? I, mean, I find it really quite remarkable. It, it's, it's, it, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. This is like a puzzle, and, and I don't know what the re reward should be if you can solve it, because it's unsolvable. It, and it's and it's self-inflicted. It's created. It was created here in Washington with the the protests that broke out in the spring uh, spring of 2011 in Syria. The decision here was to look at that not as a, a problem to help resolve in terms of conflict resolution, but as an opportunity to work with our so-called allies, particularly in the Gulf, allies like Saudi Arabia, to militarize those protests and use those protests as a way to weaken and then overthrow the Assad government in Syria as a way to contain weaken and contain the Islamic Republic of Iran. That was a strategy that was even strategy that was even publicly briefed here in Washington. It ran in the New York Times. Yeah. So it's a strategy created here, and then of course it didn't work, and we're looking at the incoherence uh, and, and failure as a result. Well, Stephen, I mean, what, what Hillary just said there, the plan to destabilize uh, and overthrow the, the government in uh, Syria was it's quite easy to understand, okay? That's, that's kind of typical U.S. regime change. But what Obama is attempting to do, and oh, by the way, it will be the next administration administration that will finish off the job. It doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make any sense to you? Well, I think it's a little unfair to suggest that it all the, the involvement in Syria and helping the people who were trying to overthrow the Assad regime was simply an effort to contain Iran. I think it was a genuine feeling that uh, Assad was a dictator who, who was ruthless and he was wanted people wanted him overthrown the way other countries had in, 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 in the throw, enthusiasm about the Arab Spring, that this would be another change towards the democracy. Obviously, it, it hasn't worked out that way, but I don't, I don't think it's totally fair to say it was all, all because of well, our desire to contain Iran. Now, I do have my, my feelings well, we, are we about what's going on way, is Secretary that State, I, I can State understand. I, I can understand that that the U.S. that Obama had felt he had to intervene because of the situation threatening uh, his, our so-called ally, Iraq. I mean, even the Russian foreign minister, Av uh, Lavrov, on Friday at the U.N. said, supported the Iraqi government in, in trying to ward off uh, ISIL. So I think that there is a, and that we have, there is a coalition of 50 or 60 countries now supporting this effort. I don't think it's simply, I think my problem with the whole effort is I don't see what the end game is. And I think that's the most troubling part of the, of the situation. H Hillary, you want to jump in there real quick before we go to London. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Secretary Kerry, six months before we decided to seize the opportunity to militarize these protests in Syria as a way to weaken the, the government in, in Syria to, to then get at Iran, six months before that, when Secretary Kerry was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, he was whining and dining with the Assad, with uh, Bashar al-Assad and his, and his wife in Damascus. So this idea that we saw Syria, Assad as a dictator, that is just not borne out by the record that he was a dictator with whom we couldn't do business. The the Obama administration and Secretary Kerry himself, when he was chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, was focused on trying, looking at the possibility of engaging Syria as a way, again, to peel it from Iran. But when we had the chance to go in there and militarize protest and do it that way and get the Saudis on board with that, we seized that opportunity. The idea that there's any feeling here for, you know, poor people in Syria, that just goes, that goes against the whole grain of U.S. foreign policy. Masume, in, in London, how do you see the... Oh, uh, come Obama? on, that's oh, no, 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 very let me go to 
our guest in London. Well, come on, you guys. Let me go to our guest in London, and then we can do all the cross-talking we want, okay? Masume in London, you've been listening to Stephen and Hillary. What's your take here? Go ahead. Yes. I mean, uh, there is no doubt that uh, many of us would uh, disagree with what uh, Syria and Bashar Assad uh, uh, are doing. I mean, Bashar Assad is responsible for thousands upon thousands of p uh, civilian deaths. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we are also witnessing uh, 13 years uh, of mess. Uh, I can, that's the best word I can find, a uh, mess that has been created by mismanagement of international uh, affairs. Uh, it started with uh, Afghanistan and then rushing in 2003 to Iraq. Uh, and then, uh, you know, now we, have, we are facing IS. And you would expect that the uh, American uh, government would come up with some new strategy, because that's what that, that's what was advertised to be. Uh, and we all got very happy that there's going to be this new strategy, these new alliances. Uh, but we get a speech from the president, uh, from President Obama, which doesn't give us anything new, any new angles, any new alliances. And it's working with the old partners, uh, old alliances, and still uh, en enmity towards uh, uh, the old uh, enemies, such as uh, Iran and Syria. I think the clever thing would have been to think bigger uh, and to think uh, of bringing on uh, new powers who would be able to resolve, who have okay. good connections. I mean, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, just bomb uh, Iraq or Syria without having some kind of uh, uh, support from Iran and Russia. These okay. two let are me, let me. We'll talk about the outside powers in a second here, in the second half of the program. Hillary, you know, we keep hearing about these mythical moderates, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at, you know, what happened in Iraq. They spent tens of billions of dollars training this army and security forces, mm -hmm. and then they just disappeared. So we're going to try to do it in Syria now. The same thing. I, I don't get it. And in, and in particular, in Iraq, with the surge, the, must, the, the most uh, praised surge in our, our policy in Iraq, we not only trained up the Iraqi military, but we in particular armed, trained, and funded 80,000, 80,000 80, Sunni Muslim militants that we called tribal, tribal militias in Iraq to at the time try to contain the precursor of ISIS, the al-Qaeda al in Iraq. That was not only a complete failure, but many of those thousands, tens of thousands that we trained are now part, part of ISIS. So this idea that we can continue to arm train and Sunni arm train and fund Sunni militants has not just been a failure, but it has literally exploded in our face from the time that we started to arm train and fund the Mujahideen in Afghanistan to, to repel the Soviets. We did it there. We did it in Libya. We've done it in Syria. We've done it in Iraq. This is now coming together in a mass cross-border, trans-border mass that has built the wealthiest, strongest, most sophisticated terrorist organization we've ever seen. You know, Stephen, it, 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 there's this no learning curve here. It just gets worse, actually. Uh, there's no learning about the past mistakes, and it continues. This, and now it's, just, it's not only breaking up single countries, the entire region is ablaze here. Listen, when we listen to our guests in London, shouldn't there be a major rethink in how to approach this? Well, no, I, I totally agree with, with the, our guests in London about a rethink. I mean, the problem is goes back to George W. Bush in 2003. I was adamantly opposed to the intervention uh, of the U.S. in Iraq. I mean, without any U.N. authorization, totally unilaterally, it was absolutely a total disaster. And we're now suffering from the consequences of that horrible decision by the U.S. government and George Bush. So, but right now we have to deal with the reality of the damage created by that decision. And, I, I, you know, I, I don't think there's any easy answer. I'm, I'm, I'm very discontented by the fact that the U.S. is bombing at this point to prevent ISIL uh, from taking over. I mean, it, once again, it looks like it's the Christians versus the Muslims, which has been so damaging in the past to the U.S. involvement in the Middle East. But on the other hand, what, do you, what else do you have to do? I, I, I mean, you, you know, it's nice to... Oh, the idea of create a co you know bring the well, Iranians no and the harm. Russians and the Russians no are not harm. about to put any troops in there. The Iranians are not about to put any troops in there. The only troops we're going to get are the are the the uh, Iraqis and maybe these so-called moderates. But uh, honestly, I don't really see what other alternative. Did you want to let the ISIL take over Iraq? No, no, no. I, I don't no think that there are plenty of options look, here. Look, look, there are plenty I, look, of I left, options. I left the Iraqi. Hey, look, I left the Bush administration. 
Go ahead, go ahead, Kelly. No, no, it's important because I left the, I, you know, I risked my entire career by leaving the Bush administration over its policies of invading Iraq, the axis of evil, and its war on terror. But it gives Obama, it gives Obama a blank, it gives him a blank check to go forward with the same policies, if not worse. Libya and Syria were entirely created on President Obama's watch, and he's getting away with it by continuing to put all the blame on the Bush administration, as much blame as they deserve. But it was President Obama's strategic failure, his decision to go into, to abuse the U.N. authorization to affect regime change, bloody regime change in Libya, and then to militarize these protests in Syria. We have to take responsibility for that failure and now co go forward instead of trying to make up, try to piece together these irreconcilable pieces yeah. by making a quid pro quo with the Saudis, for example, that in, in exchange well, I, for their help in defeating an ISIS, in which they helped create, we're going to take out Assad. That is that is not just incoherent. That's going to be disastrous. Well, let me let me just let me just interject here. I think you ought to also address the fact that the, the Obama administration did try to get a political deal in Geneva with Syria. It wasn't totally totally dismissive of, of trying to work out some settlement. And indeed, with Iran, of course, we have ongoing talks about the nuclear issue there. So we're not you know, cutting off any possibility of a political settlement. And that, of course, is the crucial uh, goal that we all we all seek in, in, in okay, the Middle well, East. But there's no, so I think that, that ought to be part of the you know, discussion. But, but Stephen, as there's well no the evidence of that. Part. I don't see any evidence whatsoever the United States wants a political solution here. All right, I have to go to a short break here. After our short break, we'll continue our discussion on the Islamic State. Stay with our team. Okay, I'd like to go to Masume in London. I, I think there are some opportunities and some strategies that haven't been thought about could actually be applied here. You wrote an article recently about Iran's possible involvement in solving this crisis in the Middle East, most recent one here. If, if and I'd like to ask all of my guests this, and if ISIS is the, the meanest, the baddest, the worstest, blah, 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 on and on and on, then it should take some imaginative thinking from the major powers of the world to get together, settle some of their differences, or at least put them aside a little bit. And I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, I'm talking about Iran, the United States, other countries to step up because what has happened in the past has been failure after one failure after another. So I'd like to ask my guests in London, what about a, a grand configuration to put an end to this ridiculously horrific organization? A grand configuration is precisely what we need, actually. And my article was really not just about Iran, but it was about that grand configuration. Uh, I think it's no good to go on with the old narratives. And when you listen to politicians, they're the same narrative. I mean, it's just we have to destroy, we have to destroy, we have to create more new groups to fight the old groups. You know, we keep on building on these groups of uh, terrorists on top of one another. And uh, as Hillary was saying, it's it's no good. It's not. Uh, it's not creating results. And and we need to think much bigger. We need to think in new terms and new narratives. And uh, we have to bring in new alliances, as I said. And, and these new alliances must include uh, countries like Iran. Uh, and uh, Iran is in fact the only country that has been helping militarily uh, on the ground, and it's it's is very passionately involved. I'm, I mean, I'm not a big supporter of the Islamic Republic. But it has been helping uh, uh, quite a lot uh, on the ground, and it has been helping in terms of uh, supporting the Peshmerga and, and also providing military support. Uh, and, and Iran has good relations with Bashar Assad. So Iran could be used for uh, diplomatic gestures, for if the need arises for uh, uh, striking uh, in Syria, it's much easier to do it through cooperation and understanding rather than just hitting uh, targets that are not known. Iran doesn't want to be involved in any way in a U.S.-led military uh, action in the region, but Iran does like to be uh, uh, considered as an important, powerful, Regional operator. All right, let me uh, let me let me go to, Hil go, let me go to, to go do, Hillary to on do that. The deals. Hillary, th th that, that, that's that's common sense. What we just heard was common sense. Okay, go ahead. Would you like to react? 
It, it is. And one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Going to Tehran, was that I think that Iran is critically important to every one of the, the to resolving every one of the current conflicts that we see that are so pressing on the international stage that go on in the Middle East, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in Afghanistan, uh, in, in Syria, in all of these places, Iran is absolutely central. But unfortunately, because of the, the continued path that U.S. foreign policy has taken, I'm not sure that at this point, the government in Iran, that strategists in Iran, see it in their interest to join up with the United States as the United States is increasingly militarized these various protests and bomb and is bombing now continuing to bomb not only military targets but civilian populations it's now being perceived and talked about by sunni clerics across the muslim world as an american war on islam yeah. i'm not sure that iran wants to join that in, on the side of the united states that appears like it's taking the side of minorities in the middle east that's a very dangerous path for iran to join up to and i think one of the reasons why you've seen the supreme leader in iran uh, put a, a bit of a quash on any on any uh, Iranian participation in this kind of coalition. It's not only the narrative here in Washington that we don't think it's appropriate for Iran to come because they're not as well behaved as they should be in terms of the U.S. Uh, foreign policy agenda. The Iranians themselves, um, even though like they see yeah. ISIS as a threat, they have their own strategy, which is working for them. It's a long-term strategy. Teaming up with the United States in a war against Sunni Islam could be disastrous for Iran, and I don't think they're going to jump at that opportunity. A very interesting point. Stephen, you want to jump in and you react to any of this? I, Let me go to Stephen here in New York. Go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I want to tell you that I was at a private meeting with, uh, the, the, with the foreign minister of Iran, uh, last week here when he was here for the U.N. session. And he was asked directly, uh, would you, are, are you upset that the U.S. has not included you in the coalition against ISIL? He, he said, listen, I, I, I'm, we have too many other issues to deal with with the U.S. We're, we're focusing on the talks about the nuclear issue. That's our main concern right now. Obviously, you know, we, we, we want to, def to de defeat ISIL, but right now our mo most important issue, uh, our dealings with the U.S. is over the, the, the resolution of this whole nuclear issue. So I think, you know, the two speakers are correct that Iran does not, at this point, really care one way or the other about getting involved in this coalition. I will say, though, that the fact that, you know, it, maybe 60 uh, nations supporting this coalition that the U.S. has assembled, may, maybe it's paper thin, but the fact is that you do have 60 nations who seem to believe that what the U.S. is doing to try to defeat ISIL is a but, legitimate no, there, effort on, on the there, part of the world community to, to get rid of a, a, a scourge. But, Go ahead, Hillary. Well, yeah, there, well, I mean, there's, sure, a, very, it's a, there's problem. a very serious problem that most with that. Most of those countries will not participate in the air raids and they will not put troops on the ground. I agree with that. That is a problem. Okay, that's on. not the problem. No, that's not the problem. That's not the problem. The problem is that we talk about it as if these nations are with us. That is not what is happening. What is happening is you have unrepresentative governments, like the Saudi government, like the Emirati government, who are with us. Their populations, public opinion polling in Saudi Arabia in particular, should shows those populations overwhelmingly against U.S. military action against ISIS. Al-Hayat, the Saudi-owned Arabic newspaper, published a poll, they put it forward, that showed that 92 percent of Sunni Muslims in Saudi Arabia think that ISIS accords with their definition of, is of Islam and Islamic values. That is a problem for the Saudi government, and the United well, States, well, by are... getting There's them into this coalition, other nations teaming up with you them, mentioned. is only going to accelerate pressure on the Saudis. Okay, real There's quickly. 55 other nations you haven't mentioned in the coalition. Okay. So, I mean, if you don't mention the other 55 okay. nations, then, they're not, right. they're not hang, hang on, so hang hang on. Hang on. Hang on. everybody hang on. Us. I'm sure Australia's contribution will tip the scales here. Let's go back to London here. You wanted to jump <laughs> in. Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to say that uh, that is why we need to have new alliances. I mean, Iran and Saudi Arabia um, have been one of the main causes of the creation of ISIS and lots of other little uh, terrorist organizations because they are in fierce rivalry uh, about Sunnism and Shiism. And, and if, you bring, uh, uh, if you bring them together, this will create better relations between those two as well and iron out some of the problems in that. 
that way. As for Iran, as we were discussing in, in uh, New York, uh, Iran, I think, is keen to, uh, to resolve the nuclear issue first and then move on to uh, talks with, with the United States. And that is why the, the, the President Rouhani said uh, in his interviews that he, he wants to deliver one baby first before uh, he does the other, if that's uh, it's not a very nice expression, but there we are. Um, so that's what, that's what Iran is after. Uh, but uh, Also, another issue that I want to get onto is that we mustn't think that uh, uh, it's just a question of IS or ISO or ISIS or, or groups that are fighting in Iraq and Syria. Look at Afghanistan. Afghanistan still has Taliban creating serious challenges in 14 out of 34 provinces. Uh, and uh, in one of the provinces, Ghazni province, uh, ISIL, ISIL or ISIS is actually moved in, according to reports that were uh, published two days ago. So they are spreading their wings. We, this this ca must go beyond, uh, beyond uh, co coalitions in the region and with Arab nations and with Sunni Arab countries. It needs to go beyond that. It needs to look to other countries even wider than the region. You know, Hillary, it's very interesting. I was trained as a historian. I was trained I as a historian. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to Hillary. Hillary, I was trained as a historian and a modern European history, and I'm very well aware how um, when the Ottoman Empire collapsed, the European powers redrew the map of the Middle East. And ISIS wants to destroy that. It made a big public announcement about that. But you know, the United States and its coalition of the willing, they're doing exactly the same thing. They're destroying borders, ignoring sovereignty, uh, uh, bombing civilians uh, 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 under conditions that are illegal under international law by any definition whatsoever. I mean, I mean, how can people in the region condemn ISIS when the outside powers delegitimize every single value they claim to stand up for? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a critically important point, and it gets to this incoherence in U.S. foreign policy, which pretends to stand for sovereignty vis-a-vis -vis some countries, vis-a-vis -vis some situations where they are perceived in U.S. interests. But what's happening in the Sunni Muslim world is fundamentally profoundly important. We had a failure of a participatory Islamist political mo model in Egypt, where a U.S.-supported coup there overthrew the, de the democratically elected government of Mohamed Morsi. With all of his failures, the key point here is that the U.S. government is now backing militarily with all of its might a government there that has squashed a participatory Islamist model for governance, as imperfect as it was. And what we're left with is this void, this vacuum, into which now we have ISIS, which I think our, our colleague in London is very correct to point out, is spreading its, its views, its practices, its tactics, its strategy, not just into Afghanistan, but even into Egypt, where we've seen beheadings right. of Egyptian Hang on. I, I want to be, military Hillary, I want to be there. fair. I want to be fair. To everyone, can I, I want to, I I want to give Steve, the, can, Stephen the last yeah. word. You got 30 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to be fair. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I think if you talk to the Egyptian military government, they would not have said that the U.S. participated in overthrowing the, the, Morsi, go the Morsi government. They, in fact, they thought we, we, we supported it too far and, and, and at too great length. So I think that's a little unfair to suggest the U.S. was complicit in any well, coup overthrowing that government. But in addition, I do think government. that... Uh, I, all right, all right, I, all right. I, 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 everybody I, I, hold I, their I, horses. You know, everybody hold your... We've thing. run out of time. Many thanks to my guests in Washington, New York, and in London. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, Crosstalk Rules. I love you.